All right, I'm in the yard here. And the issue is my deck is too short. Again, uh, they said the previous guy, the way he had this, see like this thing also has, uh, has these uh, support feet, right? And so on the previous trailer, the guy had the deck insert in the back. And I think he had probably over 30 feet in the well. So the, these guys say that this was sitting on the deck and that was sitting on the deck. So this is, this is much shorter than the previous piece. So, but it's still, you know, we try to put it over here. There's enough room. We can put, we can, oh, these, this leg in here. But it's like this food, but it's all, I don't trust it. It's like shaky, you know, I said, you know what, let's use this and just disconnect this and so we disconnected these feet and we put it down i know these can take the weight right because i had that's where i had my 120,000 piece and it should be okay here but the crane guys say that they kind of like leery of bringing this all the way down so they want to find some blocks so he wants to see if they can give me some blocks so basically they want to keep this like this you know they're afraid that if they keep going down that thing will shift you know but still this is much better than the previous thing because this one at least has everything is metal underneath you see this is all solid solid frame so no sheet metal on this one and this is a solid solid piece so so once we position it properly it should be okay except i don't like this i like i don't like this at, at an angle and actually probably that's what he was talking about if we put the lower the front piece on the ground you see this it's because it's not level right so it's going to be touching the wood only in one spot so that's a too much actually wait a second maybe we can do this you see this we can put this level yeah that's what i should tell hold on so we got this is the guy loading me 165 ton grove we asked him how much it weighs he says his uh, gauge shows 105 i said i feel like killing somebody but then i look at the sticker the sticker says 47,000 kgs which is uh 103.2 or something but basically here's an idea right and i think it might work you see this thing this angle right so if we don't use anything in the front and we put the front down i'm pretty sure that this piece will be almost level right and when i told the crane guy i said hey let's just pick it up and we're gonna move it one foot here so that this pot sits on the wood and also another big advantage is that there's this angle in here so this will push into the wood this angle here right and so this will keep the wood in place yeah i like it you know so this will be like this here so it'll be much more secure and i do want the front on the deck because i'm not sure how well they said it's like nine feet nine feet tall but this is definitely a much easier piece you know to to deal with and also if we use that but i really want this to get away a little bit from my connectors in there so yeah you see this i think it's like made for this it's gonna be perfect we'll just have to make sure that the uh, the timbers don't shift while while this when this starts going down 
then I have to find the space for these somewhere but I like this thing I like this load so much better because again it's all all super thick look at this look at this two inches metal everywhere right so I can hook up chain well of course they, they only does two d-rings on the top I saw and two in the front and then the rest you have to improvise and I don't see any traces like where the previous guy put put chains maybe it's possible to grab here oh maybe here oh, okay yeah this is very strong so you can put a hook in there you can put put a hook in there like do hook, two hooks like this so if this is hundred thousand so I need what uh, one pair can hold twenty thousand so we'll do twenty in the front twenty forty forty on one end forty on the other and uh, two pairs in here and maybe one more somewhere just to go over a hundred thousand car body that's what it's called car body terex 6800 so the basically this is the part that goes under the the superstructure that uh, i brought and then the um i think the tracks actually i think it's now it's turned sideways i think when the when it sits it's like this like this is let's say the front or the rear whatever but it sits like this and then the tracks go in here you see this so the tracks go like this and on the other side they go like this but the way they design them they design them you know for ease of transportation because they know that these cranes have to be disassembled right um, but yeah and so so the tracks go like this and then the car body goes on the top over there and they see this that's where it turns remember that big uh, ring with teeth uh, with gears so that's where the it would be turning once it's assembled you know so easy load should be easy to secure not so much rush because there's no trucks it's a private uh, private uh, small you know very small town in here and uh, so I'll have lots of time to secure I like this when nobody rushes me I'll put a bunch of chains oh and of course one thing you have to do is when you load like this you have to take all your chains out you know sometimes you forget like some you know how so how some driving guys they actually happen uh, happen to me a couple of times I, I back to a dock with a driving trailer and I forget to open the doors and of course you cannot open the doors because they're swing out right so you have to back away like you walk there 70 feet and shit you you against the dock so you have to go in the cab back off go open the doors go back back to the dock so that a costly mistake so here it's pretty much the same if you forget to take your chains out from the trailer and no i don't need a headache rig because a headache rig because uh, i'm the owner of the business and i have one truck one trailer if i had company drivers they would be muscling the chains all day long i would make them buy a headache rig normal people keep chains and binders in the trailer because we have the same trailer we don't change trailers all right i think they brought some uh, some blocks it didn't work um this part right so because it was it kept pushing the wood you know when we try to it would work in an ideal world if they could uh, just lower the front independently and then deal with the rear but they didn't want to do they didn't want to do that they wanted to you know they, they didn't want to disconnect two slings but uh, so basically we're back to square one that's <laughs> that's how i was moving the that monster piece but at least this one is twenty thousand pounds lighter and i like this i really like this that it sits on metal you know not those shaky feet so this cannot go anywhere so yeah so two uh, d-rings in there somewhere yeah two there's two eyes on the top of this and two eyes in the front and um, and of course the problem as usual is because i have only two axles you know that's it's good to have two plus two but i you see my uh the only d-ring i'm pretty much can use I, i'm not gonna use any of those fuck it so if i put the chain in here okay this looks like this is just 
uh, you know, a string, but these are hoses, right? So there's no way for me to hook, you know, and this is the rear. It's important to tie this down. You see, that's why it's so nice when you have a longer deck, you know, like the, like the previous guy, he put it down on the deck. It would be so much easier. Yeah, by the way, I, uh, I put in the blue shim in there before I only had the yellow one in there. So I, I dropped the air when I was getting ready. And I, when I put my uh, axles down, I managed to open that gap in there and put the, uh, put the blue shim, which is my medium sized shim. So now it should be okay, but yeah. Oh, there's another one in there beautiful uh, you see the eye there so there's one there but again i i don't think i can use that one because it's gonna damage those hoses Shh. But i really want to tie down this you know the end so again it's gonna you know usually like i always say you know the first half hour you just walk around and you scratch your head and you think where do i put my chains you know? like the middle is easy I'm just telling you my thinking process, right? The middle is easy. I see this, that's automatically tied down in my book. I don't care, right? Because I can put the big hook in here. That's why you need those slip hooks, right? I can, I can put like, see this? I can put one chain here, one chain here. No, wait. Okay, one. We can put one like this, one like this. So anyway, let me start chaining it down and then I'll show you guys when I'm done. That's the first challenge to tie it down, but at least we got it loaded. That was actually the first major challenge to load this on a 26 foot deck. You see, that's why I keep saying I need the longer deck. And maybe I should just forget about changing decks. I should just get a five, five foot insert, you know, because Fontaine sells a five foot deck insert. So imagine one, two, three, four, five. So this piece would go in here and I, I, if I put it in, I become 26 plus 5 is 31, I wouldn't even touch it. I would keep it there all the time, I don't care. But I wonder if that would be enough or not, but it would definitely make things uh, easier. Anyway, so 47 metric tons, 47,000 kgs, so 103 something. Let's, let's rock and roll. All right, I'm clean. I was so dirty, wearing clean clothes, and uh, the money had to be paid for storage. And uh, the broker added uh, 250 bucks to my previous uh, invoice. And I'm like, what is this for? Oh, when you're picking up the machine, they'll ask you for payment. And I hate when they do that. And of course, I said, how do I pay? Oh, they probably take credit cards. Okay, and then this guy comes out, he says, uh, uh, so you're ready? I can take you to the bank. <laughs> I said, what bank? Well, we only take cash. And I said, hey, the other guy who was helping me, he said, you might take PayPal. And he says, okay, hold on. And he's one of the owners of this crane, crane slash storage business. And uh, so he called the other guy and they said, uh, yeah, I give him this hotmail.com. And so I went to my Hotmail account and sent the money. Um, but of course it's conversion. I, you know, because my PayPal hooked up to my um, Canadian dollar account. So they, they always get you somehow, right? But anyway, we are ready. I am ready. And again, the trick, never tighten your chains when the trail is on the ground right i always drain everything i drain the suspension and you know the i drain the jeep the jeep set the trucks there and the trailer was on the ground and so i just connect chains and i tighten them but you know just um so that they're not entirely loose right and then i finish i finish tightening them only after yeah this was mine a guy came out with this uh only after it's lifted because the machine the load always shifts a little bit 
And you see these uh, do come in handy, like uh, 3 8 chains. I like this. And so those are the feet. And this is really that scary stuff. I would not want that, uh, you know, on this. And it doesn't pivot. See, like all that thing was sitting in here. I know it's probably it's it's strong, but I just don't trust this. But these are so heavy. Damn. Anyway, I use my cheat, uh, uh, cheetah bar, tighten this. Uh, pretty much used all. I think I have one chain left. And uh, the two new binders are two new binders are still in there. Anyway, so what we did here, so one pair, right? So there's a uh, one chain on each side always. So one pair like this to the top and I had to use my um, had to use my uh, latches um, then two chains in there right like one chain like this one chain like this then one chain in the middle there uh, in the distance so where is it over here so basically one by one chain I mean two short chains so one pair so that's 20,000 pounds Right, so we got this pair holds 20,000 pounds, this one holds 20,000 pounds, this 40, this is uh, 60, this pair is 80, this pair, this the same one on the other side, right? This is 100, this is 120, 140, 160, 180. Um, and this time I did not hook up anything to the flip axles because it just keeps raising them it's no good so yeah that's not perfect but those are pretty strong they're solid solid metal pieces because like here's you know you always have to look for all this stuff hoses right i wanted to hook up in there but i would it would damage this you know going this way i wanted to do it like that see I really need one more d-ring somewhere like but I did it like this I see it helps when you um, you need to have some chains with only one hook so what I did is I took this put it in there and then created this right so it's kind of like a this is very strong so this is much better than just hooking like this because this sits on two two sides right so this is very strong so pretty sure it's as good as this uh, so yeah as you can see all this is pretty that's what creates all the weight right all these chunks of steel uh, so the airbags look I'm a bit worried about the front uh-huh I knew it you see so the front airbag that does not have too much weight why because i put the biggest shim in there you see like that's the space and of course when you put a big shim it uh pushes this in so you see this airbag is smaller than that and this one and these ones are equal pretty much well this one is a little bit smaller but yeah they're just the front so this is there's a bit less weight on the front than i'd like uh, so what can we do not much we can do now too late so basically for this kind of load so now I know for the future for so for a hundred thousand pounds that red shim it's too much so red shim only for probably 115 and higher you see that one because that gap it's too big and so it pushes this in and it raises this uh, this axle so uh, see now see how tall it is and so I can raise the front but if I raise the front all it will do it will load the rear axles right I probably shouldn't have put in I, and I put a shim in here but actually it was not like even now it's not it goes like that and then like that like the top of the frame I think it's now okay what I should do probably yeah I'm not sure why I'm on five I should be on three that's the uh, standard
understand the fight so yeah it's okay because usually this axle is always overloaded because it's so close to the to the load so this time it gets a break and the last thing i gotta do is just before leaving i'm gonna double check the height so that's the tallest point yeah it's not that tall I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm less than 13.6, but we'll double check. And now how to get out of here. Like the turn is there, 90 degrees. I cannot turn, I'm near the fence. I have to go that way, so I figured I'm gonna go forward and you see that, that big pylon in there. I'm gonna go forward and then back in a straight line all the way to the fence and then try to make this corner try to go like this and then around the building like around the building is pretty good it's very very wide I just need to clear this crane somehow I have to squeeze between the crane and the pylon I think we should be okay yeah nice load you see this is so much easier than that stupid superstructure Oh, and remember what the, the guy said? The guy that said, uh, we're gonna be losing $15,000 a day if we cannot fix that leak within a couple of days. <laughs> this is the part for the same crane, right? Because he was saying, yeah, we have uh, this crane is supposed to go to work. Like, wait a second, what work? I have this. You cannot use that crane unless you receive this. So, so basically, don't believe all you hear, you know, just like on television or, or, or in newspapers. Or like my broker says, oh, I think they take credit cards. And then the guy says, oh, we actually take, we only take cash. Um, so yeah, and uh, I'm like five miles away from Michigan. See, this is the bureaucracy, right? I'm five miles away, but my gross weight is somewhere around 175,000 pounds. So, which is 95,000 over the legal limit. 95,000. So, I need a permit. I wonder how much they charge for uh, being 95,000 over the legal limit. You know, it's it's not like it's uh, 100,000, it's just 95, but... <laughs> you know, you, you can run into a cop, you know, like a guy that's... Some young, ambitious guy looking to, to, to get ahead, right? He'll bust my, my, my butt, you know, and... Uh, I don't know, probably 20, 50 grand? So yeah, so we're not doing that. Uh, last time it took what? It took like two days. Uh, at least the good news is that, that these guys are okay uh, with me sitting here. And I said, where do I wait? Do I wait like in there? Like outside there? But it's not very wide. And this load is a little bit like nine feet, nine feet wide. So if I go on that road, it will be difficult for people that are coming in and I see cranes coming all the time like these guys have uh, have uh, three or four cranes and actually I, ch I was checking out uh, the website I found the website of this uh, company because I, I knew their name and they actually it showed on Google Maps you know sometimes you see a link to their website and it has an interesting history um, some guy had a dream to own his own business back in like 60s and 70s and he was uh, some kind of a like high skilled uh, worker you know highly skilled worker like I forgot uh, fitter some mechanic or something like that and so somehow he found uh, money and he um, bought a he bought a crane and he started a crane company 
you know so all you do you buy a crane and then you look for people to hire you and pay you the big bucks to lift stuff up like you know let's say if you're you know your weight is a, your wife is on a diet but the diet is not progressing as quickly as you hoped and so you need some help lifting her to the second floor so stuff like that you know typical typical rural indiana uh, scenarios you know and i guess there were too many <laughs> i guess there were a lot of overweight people but the business took off no but seriously they of course they they um, they use the cranes for construction and stuff like that and you know this is like really a rural indiana and it's funny how the guy uh, became successful and then the, his uh, uh, family like you know his sons joined in and actually the guy who was talking to me about the money he's one of the owners so now there's like three owners i think there's like two sons and then probably they they sold the share to somebody else so you know it's like an old company the 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 founder is no longer around but uh you know his business is here so probably that's a good thing you know like when you're gone that it's not just like some stupid monument right but at least there's something that you created and it still works and brings uh and helps people provide some kind of service um, you know makes people money so that's pretty cool so they still remember this guy because he started whole this whole thing right and that's all they have so right so they have a big yard they have a building where they do repairs and they have all these cranes and it's a pretty you know not a small property at least you can go around like lots of places I go to it's almost impossible to get out but now you can see that uh, you can see the gate and by the way that intersection over there in the distance I was coming from there it took all my skill to turn right uh, I had to go all the way on the shoulder where the blue truck is now on the opposite shoulder and then turn right uh, it's pretty narrow and so I came in, yeah, and you see, so now my truck is, I'm too close to the fence to be able to turn in there. And that's why I'm thinking, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drive like that towards the that door and make sure my Jeep and my truck and my trailer are in the same in a straight line. So it's easy to back and then I'll just back right into the angle, I mean, into the corner so this yard so that I can go in front of this but once I'm there I know I'm good because that's how I came you know at first I pull in like this and the guy says oh just back under the crane and I said guys I have a jeep I'm 92 feet long oh uh, well that's how the other guy did it and they should know I said how did the other guy get get in here uh, and they said oh actually he went like this around the building and then he went forward and then he backed i said uh-huh so that's what i'm gonna do i said i'm gonna go around the building and we're gonna do the same thing just go forward and then back it was much easier so well still a lot of work you know i still use a bunch of chains probably took me an hour just walking around whistling and figure out figuring out where to put the chains because again there's like hoses everywhere you don't want to you don't want to you know put pressure on all these plastic chinese one dollar hoses because they're very difficult to replace on a crane we all know that but i like this load it's kind of like feels uh, much safer because it's lower it's lighter it just sits much better on the deck um, yeah that one was scary I'm telling you that's why I drove like 45 miles per hour but I made it safe right I that's why I drove slow to make it safe it's just that uh, it was very 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 stressful probably should have paid I don't know 1.5 times more than what it did 
all right so um i think i want to get i want to go somewhere get some water or something because what's the time now two o'clock wow two o'clock i'm here since eight wow Okay, four and two to this, so it probably took like five hours. But loading, loading took a long time because because of the short deck. So if I had a longer deck, it would it would be much faster. And and actually, they said that the previous guy, right, he had uh, the longer deck, and so this whole piece just was sitting on the deck with. And they they didn't even have to remove the uh, the the feet, you know. Whereas I kept them in the front, but I remove them in the back. So the good news is that from here, it's only, what, like 350 miles? And it's a much shorter trip than that one. So shorter trip, less weight, everything is smaller. Of course, it pays much, much less than that one. But it's all money. I like American dollars. I almost made it half of the job is done the guy the crane guy helped me uh, he was watching the rear so I backed all the way at an angle and then of course I had to keep the truck as close as possible here so that you know when you have a heavy load like this it starts going sideways on you and I can see in the back like a really bad um, but you know it's it's dirt so it's okay but if, if this was pavement or asphalt and in the back there would be like a dirty trail because the rear axle is like shh. and so this nice guy he says you want me to move that dolly over there you know like in the distance uh, to the right of the truck it's a two axle dolly kind of like a jeep except it's for for the crane you know one of these big cranes where they put their they put the mast in there and they just tow that thing and so he says hey I can move it out of the way I said yeah because you see the way I am it will take me because I'm so long so now I have to go like this but I don't want to you know make a very sharp turn because it's very hard on the trailer but ideally I want to go uh, like this way you know like if I could do it like that I would go this way so that I stay as far to the left as possible because this road goes to the right right so i don't want to knock down this building and they're kicking me out they said uh could you please park outside <laughs> and i said okay let me check and i went and outside of the gate there's a uh, ground kind of like a pocket and i'm pretty sure it's like almost 90 feet so i can uh, squeeze in there because he says uh, they don't want me to block I, I wanted to park in there behind the building but they said they have some cranes leaving in the morning for work and they don't want me in this in that area but i definitely don't want to sit here because somebody will block me like because you see all these guys they park here so if they block me like that oh wow this guy can live the entire thing huh. so that's a pretty strong forklift because that dolly i'm guessing if my Jeep is uh, 8,000 pounds, well, that one doesn't have a neck, but still probably six, 7,000 pounds, and this guy is moving it. Wow. So see, now we have open area, so we can go like this. So this place is right next to a residential area. All right, so you see this is the pocket they told me about I gotta remember to turn sharply right because I'm very close to that uh, cable but yeah I'm on the solid ground here and I'm not blocking I'm not blocking the gate so these guys can come and go and I went and I investigated that intersection 
because it looks it looks steeper than 90 degrees you see the way the uh, pickup truck went so i have to go that way because i asked him i, I said uh, of course i will have to follow my permit instructions but i asked the guys here i said what where do you usually go with your cranes you know because cranes are pretty heavy right so they should know uh the proper routes here because it's all residential area they said well just go here he says turn right and then go for about couple of miles and you'll see um, you'll see a stop sign there's a turn turn right at the stop sign and then just follow till you hit a set of lights what's he called it stop light so lights and over there that's like kind of like the main drag and I already looked up on Google Maps so that that highway with the lights and I'm turning right onto it so it's all right turns so right turn here right at stop stop sign right at stop light and this is highway 22 or something but anyway so that one goes like this and it goes straight north into Michigan which is like a few miles away and it connects with uh, with uh, US 12 and I don't know if you remember but last time uh, Michigan made me take US 12 east to 69 and then 96 uh, back to Detroit 696 East 94 North and that's what I asked this time you know because uh, but that one was uh, with uh, that one was with uh, 120,000 pound load but I figured since I'm so close to this US 12 I think they should they should send me like uh, in, on a, in a similar fashion right so so that that's all I gotta do and I think it's about I don't know three four miles to Michigan from here but you cannot go without a permit too much weight now this was Russia like I have sides on right oversized load I have flags on I I'm guaranteeing I I guarantee you if this was Russia especially in some small village there would be no signs no flags <laughs> no permits basically and you load like you stop loading when you see that the wheels start you know the wheels are about to fall off that's how you know your uh, your your load limit it's not what's written on a piece of paper or what's written on a cereal plate of the trailer it's when you when you physically see when you see the trailer physically is starting to disintegrate that's your WLL working load limit kind of like what you know you 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 watch these videos in uh, from like India China you know you, I, I saw like one funny video where the guy loaded a excavator it was not a big excavator but still probably 40 50 thousand pounds and he loaded the excavator on the back of a five-ton truck with a single axle in the back somehow they managed to you know to climb on the on the deck and of course the truck went like this because uh, the front is not heavy enough you know and that's how you kill uh, that's how you kill trucks you know people don't care they just overload them and uh, that's why I don't like buying uh, that's why I don't like buying a used RGN trailers uh, so people keep asking what RGN means so it means a removable gooseneck another common comment to my surprise is um, would it help if your Jeep had a sliding fifth wheel I'm not sure what kind of videos are you guys watching on my channel but ever since I got this Jeep right I kept saying I kept explaining that that slider that I do have this is the Jeep right this is the Jeep this is the Jeep's fifth wheel now what do you think this is what do you think this is for for decoration right you you open this that's your airlock to open the fifth wheel locks you open this and then you apply the brakes and you can drag it but you see I need to this to be here like I don't need to go backwards because I, I already have a huge gap in there I need to make that gap 
smaller so I can transfer the weight here. But I do have the slider. It's just that it's useless, you know. The, 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 body, the body of the Jeep is too short. That's the problem. So, so this tire should be here. Okay? Just too much. And so, and there's, and there's two ways to do this. Solution one, I get a new Jeep, the one that I ordered, long neck Jeep. Then everything is fine and I can move, this becomes longer and so I can move that further closer to the truck. You see here, I cannot go any closer to the Jeep now. I need this to be longer so I can move the fifth wheel so solution one to this problem is uh, getting a new jeep and solution two if i do agree to keep this jeep even though you see like i cannot use the pusher axle with this one right it's too close if i put the pusher well i put it the pusher down just to prevent sagging into the dirt but this has to be here so i need the neck to be at least one foot longer but this would still work but when the solution two would be to make this shorter this is 83 inches it's too long right so if they don't if they cannot change the jeep they need to change this uh, so if we have uh, 30 inches there and i need 12 so 18 right so we need to make this 18 inches shorter so this is the kingpin right so the kingpin we just measure from the kingpin we measure well we can measure from here doesn't matter because the the kingpin setting stays the same so you just measure 18 inches from here and so the jeep probably yeah the the front of the jeep has to be here and so if the jeep is shorter then i can bring i can bring the jeep uh, I mean if the neck is a, if the flip box is shorter I can bring the Jeep closer and that would help me with the weight distribution and I would stop overloading the trailer so but the problem here is that you see that that's the kingpin right the kingpin you have all this stuff in here like how do you cut it you can it's it's not that easy you have to reposition all this stuff you know because if this is uh, the front of the trailer so all this stuff has to go here so it's not an exactly, you know, a walk in the park. But that's probably for them, for the manufacturer, I'm thinking that's probably the, the easiest solution unless they come up with solution three where they say, you know what, we give you the, we gave you the Jeep in January, you've been using it for five months, six months, too late now, you're on your own. So we'll know what's happening once i deliver this uh, and then i go to to the plant to talk about the jeep that's priority priority number one and priority number two is is uh the booster like i mentioned before after that i'm going to drop off the booster at the misco Anyway, I'm getting hungry. I had, uh, what, two coffees and I had one of those little protein bars with three egg whites. Which probably had like 10 grams of protein. And now it's three o'clock. Wait a second. Wasn't it just two o'clock two minutes ago? Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. So I'm thinking I checked the, the ground. The ground is not too soft. So I think I'll try to drop uh, either the Jeep or just sometimes I cannot unhook the, <laughs> the fifth wheel so I drop the trailer and I take the Jeep with me but I know about three four miles like the way I'm, I'm gonna go hopefully with the permit there's a bunch of stores and shops you know coffee shops and restaurants so no Uber here so I need to go and grab some food I just solved the, the problem of the world hunger. Here's the recipe. You start your Google Maps. No, well, of course you need to have Wi-Fi. I don't use to, you know, I don't like 
you know using internet on my phone unless I really have to that's why I like my MacBook Pro 15 inch retina display high resolution uh, and I'm fixing as they say in Alabama I'm fixing to get a 16 inch uh, screen now they have the, this uh, 16 inch uh, MacBook the new one but that's so expensive like three grand I think but you know I use this is my most important tool you know the MacBook I use it for for work for you know doing paperwork business paperwork uh, researching directions I cannot live without this I cannot do it on the phone and of course YouTube videos that's what I, I use for YouTube videos but anyway the recipe to so to uh, to solve the world hunger I hate these you know lawn mowers So two brothers, the older brother gave it to the smaller brother and of course right away everything, things went sideways. <laughs> so the older brother have, has to take over. Hold on, this is how you do it. Oh, you push that button. Oh, shoot. All right, okay, I got it. Sounds like a Cummins diesel, I think. But imagine that for a kid, jeez. For like a seven, eight year old kid, running that, you know, no rules of the road, no speed limit. You can drive as fast as you want on the field. I would love that. If I was a kid, I would but it's just noisy i hate them you know when they're so noisy i think these kids they should wear some protection because that's how you go deaf back to the world hunger uh you go on google maps and you search for any place that sells uh animal protein right in my case i i don't eat all this stuff veggies bread sandwiches i eat meat meat which is which includes chicken of course fish stuff like that so anyway wait a second I, I see a pizza place pizza places they sell chicken right so I called the guy I said hey I see you have all this you know fancy chicken wings on your website you know all kinds of flavors breaded I said can you get me non breaded like genuine grilled chicken wings you know just like meat and the guy said oh yeah yeah sure how many you want I said what's the typical size he said well uh, 6 10 and 16 and I said okay I'll take 10 because I'm super hungry and then I asked him I said uh, are these just wings or is it like a mix of you know breast and leg he says no these are just wings I said you know what I'll take 16. <laughs> so I just ordered a delivery. I like two miles away from them, you know, but this saves me a bunch of, I don't wanna, I'm tired. I don't wanna actually drive the truck right now uh, because you know, it was super, super physical. Uh, all these chains and binders, you know. Uh, so I don't wanna disconnect. Now I don't have to disconnect the truck. I don't have to mess with the Jeep. I'm gonna just wait here and I said yeah give me chicken wings give me some uh, a couple of bottles of water I ran out of water I'm not sure what I was thinking leaving the, tr the truck stop the rest area this morning I didn't buy water that's the most important thing like you you can live without food what for like three weeks maybe four if you're fat but without water you cannot survive for more than a few days and so the guy's bringing me some uh, diet coke some water and some chicken wings things are looking up the food is here diet coke cold i thought it was cans i said two cans of water napkins and I said, do you have any sauce that doesn't have any dairy? And give me this. Uh, 
I'm not sure this one is dairy free. Okay. Now we have bag for garbage. And this is what I got. So plain chicken wings, you know, beautiful, non-breaded, just regular meat. So good thinking, Captain Dratcher. <laughs>